Hello and welcome to the friggin' third time that we're still sitting here in this Holy. room. We got a few questions, guys, and we are really stoked about yes. this. So, we're not going to waste any time here. We're going to get right back into these. We're on the second page now, so. Yeah, everything's going swell, so. Holy. <laughs> How do you spike your leather jackets without putting the studs through the inside of the liner? Good question. So, if you notice, the back is completely studded, the inside, no studs through the liner. Uh, what I do um, is when I made this one, because I made it from scratch, I actually just didn't close the, the inside up. If you look, I just didn't close the inside. So there's the backings of them all? Of all the studs. Um, and then at the bottom, if I hold it up, you can see it just lifts up there. Mm -hmm. That's the liner. So it's just not closed at the bottom. Um, most people don't make their jacket from scratch, so when they buy it, obviously that is closed. Sound shut. Yeah, with most jackets, you see at the very, very bottom, there's a little seam there. That one down there. Um, and if you just take a seam ripper and open the threads up, don't actually cut the liner, don't cut the leather, anything like that. Just open up all the threads. Um, and then. Yep, just cut the threads out, and then you can get under the liner and do all the stud work. After that, just take some black thread and needle and sew it back up, or you can take it to a clothing alteration shop and they'll sew it for you. doesn't really matter, but... But in the end of the day, there's no actual studs through the back of yeah. the jacket, which is a big must for me because I am allergic to nickel, which these are made out of. <laughs> so... I don't get a rash because I am not physically touching any of them, so very important. And uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend starting to do it this way because then your liner isn't stuck down to the yeah. jacket and uncomfortable. And also, I mean, if you're cold, if your studs are cold, then you're cold. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> literally. It gives you that extra bit of old comfort and warmth. Especially when you're doing a sleeve, um, even by opening up that bottom seam. Um, you can still get anywhere in the jacket. You can get into the sleeves, you mm -hmm. can get to the front. Nothing there is sewn together. Yeah. Um, oh. It's only sewn <laughs> at... Go ahead. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> so if you open the bottom, you can get anywhere in the jacket. Anywhere. So this seam here is your best friend if you don't want studs through your liner. Yep. Yeah. Next question is actually quite similar to the last one. Best tips for studying and spiking jackets. I'd say that you have a lot of really good advice on this because you are <laughs> pretty good at it. Um, you taught me how to get them really, really close together, so. Yeah, um, I've been doing it a while, so I always, I guess maybe I can show you the inside and that'll maybe show you my technique. A bit better. So the first stud, see how they're all straight lines in there? They just go horizontal or vertical. vertical. Um, yeah, the first stud you do, I mean, you poke the two holes, you put it in. The next stud, you want the... The next stud, you want the prong to go into the same hole as the last one, and you're going to poke one new hole. And then same thing. And that's how you get them really, really close together. And then the next time, you just line it up nicely and go from there, I guess? Yeah, I would say that's a good way to <clears> describe <throat> it. You're always using, reusing the hole next to the stud that you're yeah. about to put in. You're going to push it through the exact same hole as the stud that you had just put in prior to that one. And that way, you can get a really close together yeah. stud. Um, another pretty good method is I'm going to bring this this guy up a lot because it's one of my favorite tools and it's just yeah these little sharpened forks really neat very handy if you know anybody who works around metal um you can even like bring this design to them and they can probably sharp, make you one probably make you one so it's just really sharp fork um another thing <coughs> is justin always uses always. his paring knife uh he's been using that for 10 years yeah my first jacket that i got i used this on and it's still sharp. Um, um, 
really good. Yeah, I stole it from my mom when I was 15, and uh, she got really mad, and now I still use it to this day. She still gets mad. Another option is one of these bad boys. We grabbed ours from Tandy Leather Supply Working Place. Um, it's just a hole punch for leather. Uh, it can go through some really, really, really thick leather. Anywhere that's really thick that you can actually get to because it sort of has to be within two inches of the edge. So it's really handy for like boot straps or the shoulders where these little flaps come up. It can be really thick. So you can just punch a hole through and then you get your stud or push the spike right on through. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. So we normally only use these for spikes. Yeah. Or anything like this. Um, anything that goes through like yeah. a thicker band of leather. It is a very handy tool to have. Very worth the investment. Yeah. And I guess last tip would be like, don't stud your sleeves until you're really good at it because it sucks. Yeah. Like plain old sucks. And really try not to go through the liner of your sleeve because then when you're putting your jacket on, I've like ripped nails off and yeah, it's really, really terrible. So yeah, I heard that people put glue on the insides of studs afterwards to keep them from falling out. Do you do this? Yes, I have, <laughs> I have done this, and then yeah. I also haven't done this, so it really depends on the piece. Um, specifically, I find that hot glue is the way to go. I don't know any other glue that would really work or set really fast, but once you do have... One second. Grab one. Okay. So once you do have your little stud prongs bent over. I usually just glue all around where they meet and that kind of forces a connection between the two prongs making it barely like barely possible to like get out of. Yeah. So yes I've definitely done that. I used to do that as a method of protecting my skin from the stud for a while until Justin started sewing little <laughs> liners. <laughs> in Everywhere inside. on all of her clothes. Yeah. So. So, uh, our friend who makes these, uh, he solders the back of them. So if you ever, if you own a soldering gun or a little soldering iron or whatever it's called, you can solder the back of them. But only if it's on a heavier leather or something like that, something that you can't burn. Because if you, if it's a vinyl, definitely don't do it. <clears throat> You'll just burn the vinyl and or denim ruin your jacket. Yeah, because it's light on fire. <laughs> So yeah, if you have a soldering machine, you can go even further and actually basically weld them together. But yeah, the glue works. It is foolproof. I would 100% recommend that. Yeah. Going along with that, I do think that gluing pin backs to themselves is also a really good way to go. Yeah. Definitely. Way, way less likely to lose them. Yeah. If you glue. I've lost thousands of pins. Yeah. And when you're paying like a couple bucks for them, you don't want to yeah. lose them. What's your opinion on DIY tattoos, stick and pokes, etc.? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a DIY tattoo, I guess. That was done in our house. Oh, yeah. I have a DIY. Uh. <laughs> you got that on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I actually have a DIY tattoo on my stomach, if you can see it there. I'm move back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it says, punks always win. Uh, it was actually done in the room right over there. So, that's, I guess, how we feel about <laughs> DIY tattoos. This was not a stick and poke, though. No, it, it wasn't. It was done by my sister, who owns a gun. So, it wasn't technically DIY, because yeah. you didn't do it. But... We, neither of us really have like a stick and poke tattoo. Yeah. Um, I've, ne I've never really been in a circumstance where it came up or it was an option. Yeah. I've never looked to get one. Um, I don't mind them. I think that my friends that have them, that's sweet. Um, yeah. It's not really my preference. I really wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't love to get one. It's not really on my, my to do right away list, but you know, I mean, I imagine it'll happen one way or another. Yeah, probably. Stop. Get over here. Okay, so the next question is, 
asked, what is your inspiration when you started DIY, and how has your style changed since then? So I'll let you go first. Uh, well, when I first started, it was kind of, as soon as I got something new, I figured out a place to put it, like on a jacket or on some pants or something. As soon as I got something, it was on there right away. Um, now I kind of, because I have so much stuff to wear while I'm working on something, it's, it doesn't feel so rushed and I can kind of plan stuff out a bit better and have a bit more mm -hmm. stock of cool stuff so I can really theme a vest or a pair of pants or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I guess, it all just kind of evolves and you just get better and better at stud placement and patch placement and yeah. You just refine your taste. Um, you really find out what you do and what you don't like about the things yeah. that you do. Yeah, one thing I guess like when I was young is, and I think something similar for most people in the scene is that when you're young you're quite self-conscious about your body and how you look to everybody else, so I really found ways to make my outfit cover up what I was feeling not good about, about myself, whereas eventually you evolve to like yourself more and now I find ways to accentuate the things that I do like about myself. So I think once you do that and you sort of gain the confidence of things that you like to wear and things that make you feel good, then everything flows from that and it's just... Mm -hmm. So once you feel comfortable doing something, you can really put a lot more energy and a lot more passion into it, so... I feel like back in the day it was like, I don't know, like Audrey Kitchen was really big inspiration for me. She was like kind of I don't know how it was like a it was like if rock and roll and like scene queen like met she was her she was just this like pile of like everything she just like put anything on like anything like just the most gaudy things and just whatever anyway so I feel like I took inspiration from her in that and I kind of I used to be I guess I used to be really outwardly colorful and I like to get a lot of different colors onto things that I would make. Um, I feel like the way that I've changed though since then is really refined into like per outfit kind of sort of thing. I feel like I'm I'm more into the black and white scheme of things. I am more into um, kind of finding a solid color scheme to go with when I'm putting an outfit together or I'm creating a new vest or, or a jacket. Um, what's wrong? You don't want to be in here anymore? Come back! Come on! Just hang out with us up here! Come here! Oh, come here, girl! It's okay! Oh, there you go. Girl. There you go. You just want attention. It's okay. If you're outside, you'll be bored too, and you'll yeah. be inside. So I think I've definitely come to a point where I kind of think in theme of outfit instead of like per piece. I'm always kind of brewing up like what would go with what, and before I was very much just like, oh, any t-shirt and the one vest that I have, like kind of thing like that. So yeah. I feel like I'm more... Uh, you kind of you kind of get a, a bigger amount to play with, and you start yeah. your closet is so much bigger, and you start to be able to pair things well. And like he said, as soon as you're more confident in yourself and and the way that you're doing things, it all just kind of like snowballs into this big like personal style of yours, and it's kind of magical. And beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> that's why complimenting each other and empowering each other is so important in the scene um, to make people feel comfortable so they can keep doing this and keep coming back to it and supporting mm -hmm. um, small clothing labels and small shows and DIY everything, right? So next, what inspires you to make jackets like stud placement, paint, and patches? Like where to put things, I guess. Yeah. Honestly, it's just what fits and what flows. Um, a lot of the time, if you're about to start, you kind of... I personally grab everything we have, so per se, um, this like huge bag of pins or every patch that we own and I just put it all in one place and I kind of just play around. So yeah. you find exactly what would fit the best and you kind of lay it all out and it's, it's really just like a scheming process. I feel like, 
I feel like when you get the idea to make something new, you already kind of have some form of ideas already brewing in your head. I feel like it's not a total sin to borrow from your friends. I know that uh, my friend Jake has brought in a crap load of inspiration to my life into uh, incorporating more uh, white. I never used to wear a lot of white yeah. until I met Jake who wears a ton of white and it just was like, holy crap, like this is what I want to be. So, you know, it, taking small things here and there from the people who inspire you the most, Big time. Um, people aren't going to get super offended and if they do, well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Like, Nothing that we're doing is super original right now. No, like it's all around a long time. It's all been done. Like, we all love it. That's why we're here. Yeah, and that's why we continue to do it. So, I feel like through proper planning <clears throat> and scheming and uh, kind of like working off what you've already done. I know, like I would never purposefully try and recreate the exact same vest by any means. I feel like knowing what you've already done in the past, you kind of find ways to do something a little bit different so that you always yeah. have like, a different piece to be wearing that's not going to look exactly the same. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, you look at one of your older projects and you think like, oh, I don't really like how that turned out, but I do like how this turned out, so yeah. my next one I'm really going to focus on this part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I usually start with just a big stud order, and then when they get here, I kind of look at how they're kind of gonna look on a vest or whatever mm -hmm. and then we look through all our patches and mm -hmm. paint and I think of what bands are really relevant to me right now yeah that's a big one when I look back on this what's gonna what am I gonna see on this vest that's gonna be important for this year yeah two three years that I'm wearing that vest or that jacket so yeah and I feel like it's important to really be uh I don't know I guess a little bit a little bit picky with what you want yeah. to put on there uh Justin for the longest time he would only put uh, local bands on his jackets because he yeah. felt it was his duty to be promoting the bands that he was in his current scene and lately he's started to be a little more picky and started to put the bands that truly mean a lot to him because yeah. eventually you'll find a lot of your uh, pieces have a lot of bands that don't exist anymore if you yeah. <laughs> solely put your local bands on there yeah. so Big time. it is really important 100% important to advertise for your favorite bands but make sure that they're your favorite for a reason and not yeah. just because they're local not too diy but i don't have much money what are some basics to start out with and some of your most used products well this goes back i guess to the thrift store thing as well mm -hmm. big on thrift stores going as we said um buy a bottle of bleach mm -hmm. from yeah. any store mm -hmm. Go to the thrift store and buy some pants and a vest and bleach splatter it. Um, That's a very cost efficient way to get a lot of uh, diversity to your clothes without uh, yeah. breaking the bank. Bingo. And then... I would say these paints that I was talking about um, earlier, they are rather cheap at Michael's. And I, like I said, Michael's always has really good coupons to use so you can always get craft supplies on the cheap at Michael's as long as you use the coupons. Using things you already have around the house is super helpful. That's something yeah. that I did in the very, very beginning was just finding little things that I had already owned, you know, uh, things that used to be necklaces or uh, I would say also hardware stores is where Dustin and I get a lot of our Lots of stuff. chains and our little O-rings and just uh, a lot of the stuff that we use to Bedazzle. <laughs> yeah. I tried to find my most used product, but for some reason it is missing. So I actually purchased with one of the Michaels coupons. I grabbed a Martha Stewart collection. It's a mixing medium that you mix with paint. I use acrylic and it turns it into a fabric paint. So it actually binds with the fibers of the clothing so you can wash it and the paint doesn't come off so that was something that I splurged on I think the bottle was like 20 bucks but with the coupon it was relatively cheap so that is something that I get a ton of use out of because I love painting on fabrics so yeah. it's uh, paint like I said it's 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 a way to uh, get a lot of creativity into your pieces 
and a lot of diversity, but uh, pretty cheap, so. Other than that, it um, doesn't have to be expensive. You can take a flannel shirt, cut the sleeves off it, sew some patches to it. Mm -hmm. There's a start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lots of Betsy stores, you can buy patches for like 2 or $3. So you can buy, you know, 10 for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Throw those on some pants, um, some leopard print from an old sweater or whatever, right? Um, yeah, and even like cutting up the shirts that you already own, there is a ton, a ton of content here on YouTube of cutting shirt DIYs that uh, a lot of, um, especially the ladies, they love that crap. Yeah. <laughs> so good. They just cut a whole bunch of different stuff and you can even Big do time. some braiding and stuff like that just to make the clothing that you already own a little bit more unique, a little bit nicer. I find uh, you can even just, uh, like I usually do, cut off pretty much all of my uh, shirts. Uh, they're, <laughs> they don't usually have a lot of seams on them so I'm always cutting my shirts that I own to yeah. fit me better and, and it just feels it just feels like a lot more personalized yeah customized exactly uh, work with what you have and uh, go on the cheap thrift stores yeah. thrift stores coupons they're our best friend Whew. so that was we, a lot of questions we did it <laughs> we finally finished we're at the end of so. this installment of the questions on this DIY tag yeah on this DIY Q&A so, if you guys have any more questions, leave them down at the bottom, I guess. You know where to hit us up. Um, we're always open to do more. So. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys enjoyed the video, let us know. Other than that, um... Yeah, I guess that was the end of this final. Sorry, it took eight months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or so. Great things take time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in this case, so does this video. <laughs> <laughs> the longest <laughs> segments ever. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. And we shall return here on the channel very shortly. And uh, until then, see you next time. Take care.